Okay, and welcome to Ensunu Yezu. Uh, we have a couple of new books here we want to bring to your attention. Just hot off the press here, Mother Angelica Tor Prayer Book, and it was composed and uh, written by Barbara Gaskell, the CEO here at St. Raphael Center. The book contains Mother Angelica's favorite prayers. It has colored photos in there, and it's really a nice book. Uh, it shows where she grew up and uh, where she prayed and, and all the rest of it. So this is available now here at St. Raphael Center in our bookstore. It's called Mother Angelica Tour Prayer Book by Barbara Gaskell. Also, in, if you need a copy of Insunu Yezu, we still have some of those available. You can get that on catholicbook.net or here at St. Raphael Center. Okay, let us now begin with our chaplet of reparation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Incline unto my aid, O God, O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb without blemish or spot, reparation for my sins and for the sins of all thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, 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 O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named, Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. 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 O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named, Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by thy precious blood, O Jesus, 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 O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named, Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, by thy precious blood, O Jesus, 
By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify our priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify our priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify our priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify our priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify our priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify our priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify our priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify our priests. O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named. Have mercy on all thy priests, and wash them in the blood of the Lamb. Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God, the precious God, for the reparation of my sins, and for the sins of all thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priests. O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. All right, let's go to page 65. Okay, we were talking there about this holy face and the heart of Christ. And we were pointing out here similarities between this and what was written in 1884 in a book called The Golden Arrow by uh, Sister Mary of St. Peter, the revelations of Sister Mary of St. Peter. And the similarities uh, that are occurring here. Now on page 65, and it says, I have chosen to communicate my life to your soul by making it pass through the pure and sinless heart and hands of my Immaculate Mother. The more you turn to her, the more you will remain confident and childlike beneath her gaze of maternal love. The more you will be changed from one degree of glory to another. Now, if you look there at that footnote number five, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Let's take a look at that. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. which reads, All of us, gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, as from the Lord who is the Spirit. This light that he's speaking of, that Jesus is speaking of here to the monk is the light of the revelation not only of his mother Mary but of himself. This would be the sign of what we hear in this week's readings of the gospel and of course of Easter, Easter Sunday. We heard about the joy of resurrection. This light that illuminates and touches the souls by means of Mary's love. It's a maternal love now, gazing. 
Then he says, it is I who am speaking to your heart. Have I not given you enough signs of my favor? And there will be more because I know your needlessness of your fears and because I have a burning love for you and a tenderness that moves me to act with you in all things as the best of friends would act with the friend upon whom he has his heart set. Now, Jesus here is telling this monk, I have set my heart upon you. This I did many years ago. And I have been faithful to you even when you were so grievously unfaithful to me. Now you may ask yourself, this holy monk, how could he have been you know, unfaithful to God? Sometimes in our thoughts, just like it, I was telling you that story about that one priest, when he was in that accident, died, and the Lord told him he, saw, he thought he was doing good, and here he wasn't. So, little things. See, this is, this is what Jesus is saying, and this is what grievously offends him. Uh, in fact, I just heard the other day Bishop Olmsted on, uh, on our channel. He was talking about society and the dignity of man and woman and how that has become degraded and the loss of that spirit of compatible love between man and woman. Today it's anybody, anything. Okay, you can get married. So there is that loss of spirit. And he said, even in the priesthood, we see this. That loss of spirit. Okay? And that which brings about that uh, abuse that we saw, the clerical abuse, other abuses in the church, that there is no spirit of unity. Now, we see here in footnote number six, Isaiah chapter one, verse 18. Let's take a look at that. Isaiah Chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah the prophet. Okay, here we are, Isaiah, chapter 18, chapter 1, verse 18, all right, okay, Isaiah says the following, come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they may become white as wool. So the idea is the spirit, our spirit has become darkened. And Jesus is telling this monk this purification that has to take place within the soul to make it pure again. And Isaiah foretold that, that this would happen to, to mankind. He also points out here, if you go down here and you continue reading that for a minute, he says, if you are willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and resist, you shall be eaten by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, you recall that at the birth of Jesus, and even at the birth of Moses, more so Jesus at this point, the sword became the instrument of death for little children. You recall that. When the three wise men go to Herod, 
And he says, well, you find out, you come back and let me know so that I may too may go and worship him. But he sends out his charioteers to slaughter the firstborn children of Israel, all males. Mary and Joseph have to flee into Egypt. So the sword, and this is continuing today with little children through abortion. All right, so this idea here that Isaiah is talking about, also in the book, The Golden Arrow, If you have that book with you, there is here in this book, on page 171, if you have your book with you, a cross-reference prophecy that we did not think of or understand, but this is interesting because it fits right in with this passage we're talking about in Insunu Yezu and what we just read here in Isaiah. Now this revelation was given in 1846, March 12th. In this communication, our Savior points to one of the least known among the saints, the good thief, Saint Dismas, who through a last-minute public act of reparation obtained forgiveness. He is to be a model for priests who now imitating his bold, open defense of the Savior's cause on Calvary must openly preach from the pulpit and defend the church. That's the sword that has pierced the church through the bad priests and the abuse of little children. Now you see here the prophecy of Isaiah fulfilled and what Jesus is saying to this monk in Sunu Yezu and the revelation we just read from here. So it's beginning to fall into place, into a pattern. Then he says, respond to me, that's on page 65 of Insunu Yezu, respond to me with childlike trust. Accept the gift of my divine friendship. Saint Dismas did this from the cross. Now, I'm going to read a little more here about that because it fits right in with this passage we just read from Insunu Yezu. Our Lord revealed himself to me this morning after communion. He made known to me two persons. He had rendered him as a particular service during his passion. One was the holy woman, Veronica, and the other, the good thief, Dismas. Now we're looking at Dismas here. The good thief, however, who so openly and boldly defended the Savior's cause on Calvary is held up more especially as a model to priests who must now imitate him and through their public preaching defend the cause of the church. After telling me this, our Savior invited me to notice what magnificent rewards he would bestow. Then he speaks about St. Veronica. Then he goes back here to Dismas. With childlike trust. Okay. Let the little children come to me as Dismas did on the cross. to defend me and feed upon me and receive the eternal blessing of the kingdom. What he is comparing this to is the purifying of the 
the bad priests. The thief on the left, remember, <coughs> ridicules Dismas and Jesus. If you are the Christ, come down from the cross, save yourself and us. Dismas says, have you no fear of God? <coughs> so this is what he's saying that these priests that have committed abuse or who are bad priests, have they no fear of God and what their judgment's going to be? So that's why he is comparing now the priest to Dismas to defend the cause of the church, the good priests. He goes on here to say in the golden arrow, then it seemed to me that our Lord urged me to extend this promise of his name to his priests who would become crusaders. The good ones that remain would advance to the cause of saving the church. Okay, now, with that comparison, we go back to page 65, and it says, Know that nothing can come between us. You are safe. You are safe beneath the mantle of my Immaculate Mother. I have given you my saints. Okay, now we just mentioned the saint here, Saint Dismas. To stand guard about you, to comfort and counsel you, and to assist you. You have nothing to fear. Only believe in my love for you. Beloved of my heart, my priest, my friend, my precious one. Then he gives you the quote. Then I presented some souls to our Lord, some by name, others indistinctly. I bless them all as I bless you, and my mother joins with me in blessing. And with the tenderness of her immaculate heart, before leaving almost as an afterthought, our Lord said, there is nothing in your life that escapes my attention. Just like Dismas on the cross. So that's where this prophecy of 1884 ties in with this revelation to the holy monk in Sunniyazu. He's referring here to Saint Dismas, who defended our Lord on the cross, and now the good priest of the church have to defend Christ and his church from the pulpit. Now on the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In response to what our Lord asked of me. Now he has this in the italicized print for a simple reason that these are the exact words of Jesus to the holy monk, and he wanted to emphasize this. In response to what our Lord asked me, O oh, my beloved Jesus, I come before thy Eucharistic face, and I draw near to the open heart in this sacrament of thy love to respond today to what thou hast asked of me. With trust in the infinite goodness, and fearing nothing apart from sin and the peril of separation from thee, I say yes to all that thy sacred heart desireth for me. I want for myself only what thou wantst for me. I desire what thou hast for my life and nothing else. Making use of the free will that you have given me, I give thee, my sovereign and all-powerful God, the freedom to sanctify me more holy in body, mind, and spirit. These words are right from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. If you read your Catechism, you'll know where they're, they're at. They have to do with creation. Body, mind, and spirit. To love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. I allow thee, as the feast of the sacred heart, to fashion and wound me into a loving, rep living representation of thyself before the Father 
in the midst of the church. Wound me that I may be another thyself at the altar of sacrifice. Wound me with the love that is indescribable in earthly terms so as to heal all the wounds of my sins. Penetrate my soul with the divine light. Let no vestige of darkness remain within me. Now, when you think of this, and you think of what this priest is saying to our Lord, and you've got to ask yourself the question, what about, what about me as a sinner, a regular lay person? If this is a priest confessing to Jesus his faults and failures, what more do we have? You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, you always got to laugh to people that say, well, I don't sin. Well, <laughs> you better read this. Bring out his heart. You know, cleanse the vestige of darkness remain in me. I renew my total consecration to the pure and sinless heart of thy immaculate mother and await from her the maternal hands all that thou willest to bestow upon me. I thank thee for the mother's incomparable, incomparable work in my soul and in the souls of all thy priests. Through her I am entirely thine. That's what happened to that priest that was in the accident. Remember he said he heard a voice whispering to Jesus, Son, give him another chance. The mother of God. It sounds like St. Faustina's diary too. Yes, it does. Exactly. I was just going to say that. He brought up a good point, and I think it's notebook five where this exact same thing is said by St. Faustina Kowalska. Yes, the exact same thing, that it is, in fact, in the prayers for divine mercy, that if you're making the novena, there is the prayers right in there for the priest and religious. It's right in there. So it, it, it's falling into a plan of revelation preparing for the second coming. Because if you look what we just read in Isaiah, what we just read in here, and what we're just reading now, and what's in the diary of Faustina, they are all the same vestige. Okay? Then he goes on to say here, Accomplish all the designs of thy sacred heart upon my life. Glory be to the Eucharistic heart, from my own heart and from the heart of every priest of thine. Amen. Then after Holy Mass, he says, Jesus says, you need not fear. Have I not been faithful to my promise to you? Am I not doing for you and through you all that I said I would do? Trust me. There's the words from St. Faustina. Trust me, Jesus, I trust in you. Seek me out in the sacrament of my love as often as you can. I have chosen you to be above all else before all else. My priest, otter, your place is close to my open heart. Your place is before my Eucharistic face. Once again, referring, Eucharistic face and holy face are the same. Mm -hmm. This is the year during which I will begin to fulfill all that I have prepared for you from the time I set my heart upon you and chose you to be my priest adorer of my sacred heart, another Saint John for me and for my all-pure mother. Now, He says there, this is the year. Okay? The date was 2008. Ten years later, the greatest scandal in the Catholic Church breaks. He says here, this is the year which I will begin to fulfill all that I have prepared. 2008 from 2004... 2004, 2008, and then 2018 was when the sexual abuse crisis broke. 2018 is when it came to a head. 
with the McCarrick scandal. So 10 years of cleansing, of purifying. Then Jesus says, I set my heart upon you and chose you to be my priest adored. Tabernacles at this time are starting to be returned to the center. And you'll notice that in a lot of churches, you see that happening more and more. And like I said, the church that I temporarily taken care of, St. John's and I mean St. Joseph's and Alliance, they, they did a beautiful job with that church. Beautiful job. And as you look at that tabernacle behind the main altar, it's almost like it's a three-dimensional coming at you from Calvary. The way they got the crucifix and the, the scene behind the altar. And then when you look at it, the way the lights shine on it, it's almost like you're, the, when you look at the tabernacle, it's almost like Jesus is coming towards you. It's the most beautiful thing. If you're ever in Alliance, uh, and there in the morning, or you go there for Sunday mass, look at that altar in the tabernacle. Especially now at Easter time, how they have it decorated. They have the tomb in front of the main altar, and with the flowers around it. But when you look at the main altar, you're focusing right in at the tabernacle. And as the priest saying mass there, you see the threefold cross is coming at you. The, the, the cross behind the altar, the cross on the altar, and then the cross where the crucified Savior was that they took down, and what they have there for Easter. Then the tomb where the, where the cloths are wrapped. I mean, it's, it's really, he did a beautiful job. The priest there did a beautiful job explaining the Easter liturgy. And it's the way it should be done. I mean, it's, it's the most magnificent thing you ever want to see. And this is what Jesus is saying. And then, he, of course, he has the, they have the devotions at night to divine mercy. Tonight at 6.30 for the nine days. And then, but when you look at it, and the people that go to the Adoration Chapel there, they look even at the Adoration Chapel. If there's something about it that draws your attention right into the focus of the Eucharistic heart of Christ. So it's the way it is presented. I will teach you how to abide in my presence. Now here's what Jesus wants in his church. And I think this is well to be taken note of. Silence. Adoring. Trusting. Making reparation, first of all, for your brother priests. And they are so many who never linger in my presence. The fallen aways, the lukewarm, those that don't know what they're doing. I trust you again that when I instituted this sacrament of my sacrifice of my body and blood, I had in view not only the renewal of my one sacrifice through the ages and the souls of all whom I would nourish with my body and blood, but also the need of my priests to find me close at hand and to discover in this sacrament the gift of my divine friendship for them. Okay, now, once again, in the diary of St. Faustina, this is brought up. It's a, it's a total renewal of not only the laity, but a prayer devotion to bring priests closer into communion with the Christ. Okay, we'll take our break and then with how the of 1843 to today comes about.